Okay, let, let's get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm excited and happy, happy here to hear. Uh, I'm Hao Dong Tang from Inter, uh, China. Uh, we based at uh, uh, Shanghai. Uh, Yuan Zhou and Jian Zhang are all my uh, colleagues. Um, our team focuses on uh, big data analytics, storage, and network optimization and development. Um, in the last year, uh, we uh, leverage RDMA and the persistent memory to accelerate uh, Spark Shuffle performance. So today I will um, uh, show our work, uh, share our work about Spark uh, in the past year. So here is the agenda. Firstly, I will introduce the background and the motivation. Uh, why we want to use, why we want to optimize Spark Shuffle performance. Uh, uh, Spark Shuffle actually is a critical uh, phase in Spark. Uh, uh, secondly, we will give a, a briefly introduction uh, to what is the personal memory of a fabric. Uh, the third one, uh, I, will show, I will introduce the Spark PMOF uh, design. I will show uh, how we use uh, persistent memory and the RDMA to accelerate spark shuffle performance. Next part is uh, the performance evaluation. We will show uh, how we uh, uh, accelerate spark shuffle performance um, up to a performance uh, up to 20 times. The finally, we will introduce the uh, is, is a summary and the next step. So here is the background and motivation. Uh, you know uh, that volume uh, is uh, is growing at a fast rate. Um, storage as a critical uh, component uh, has continued to has continued uh, shaped and be shaped by how business deploys the cluster. Uh, while cooperating with many CSP in China, uh, we found many, there are many uh, challenge uh, facing today, uh, like um, data capacity, cellular cost, uh, and performance efficiency. Uh, for example, uh, if the computer compute and storage are co-located, um, it's actually it's very difficult to uh, ascertain the correct footprint when planning the deployment of new cluster or workload. So to avoid the further uh, reconfig reconfiguring delay, uh, uh, we often uh, over convenience the uh, resources, uh, which will lead to wait for space and uh, power utilization. And, uh, and also the, the data growth is unpredict uh, unpredictable uh, in many cases, so it is very difficult it's very possible to find that the workload requires more resources, uh, even with uh, over provision, which leads to inadequate performance without expanding the cluster. Here are the three um, solutions uh, many companies uh, pick up. Uh, from, the right, uh, from the left to right, uh, the first one is to maintain a big cluster for many team to share, uh, but you know the solution lacks over isolation and um, elasticity. So many team compete the um, resources, uh, which will lead which lead to congestion in busy workload. The, the second approach is to give each team their own dedicated compute uh, cluster. A dedicated, a dedicated cluster, it is easy and straightforward to take this approach, uh, but, um, uh, but it, it, it costs many duplicate storage um, and still lacks of uh, elasticity and scalability. The third solution is to give every team for their, uh, their own compute cluster a shared data set across uh, distribute storage instead of uh, duplicating them. Uh, it avoid over provision and el eliminate, eliminate the idle resources. Uh, 
there are many benefits uh, for compute and uh, storage disaggregation. Uh, this enable user to configure uh, different hardware for each layer. For example, uh, user can use high CPU and memory in compute node, and and uh, the storage node can be optimized for data capacity. By decoupling compute and storage, uh, different compute class running uh, Spark Young, uh, Hadoop Young, Spark can share access to common data lake. Uh, this definitely, definitely save cost and storage capacity. You could use a shared storage uh, with consistent performance and reduce uh, per over provision overhead. The common data lake uh, could be cloud storage and can leverage feature like in memory uh, cloning snapshot to deliver better performance. Uh, we can also use hybrid deployment. Uh, you can use different storage volume based on your uh, workload nature uh, and life cycle. So we have talked about uh, all the benefit about uh, uh, compute and storage disaggregation. So how it performs. Uh, we did this work last year. We found that there is, uh, there is a big gap uh, between on-demand deploy deployment uh, comparing with um, disaggregated solution. Here is a performance uh, comparison uh, of non-premise uh, non deployment with remote HDFS-based uh, disaggregated solution and object store-based uh, disaggregated solution. Uh, the conclusion here is uh, there, be, uh, there, there is a significant performance drop, even with a lot of optimization. We can see from the performance chart, uh, up to 10% performance drop for remote HDFS and up to 60% um, for the uh, object store based uh, uh, disaggregated solution. Object store here we use safe as uh, the HDFS uh, S3 interface. Uh, we did this work last year. After that, uh, we're trying to uh, because, because there is a significant performance gap, so we were trying to uh, use new technology to optimize the performance um, in disaggregated solutions, such as uh, persistent memory, RDMA, uh, FPGA, and the GPU. Uh, on the one hand, we change S3A connector to a luxury and optimize a luxury performance with a persistent memory. Mm, on the other hand, we uh, optimize Spark performance with a personal memory over fabric and the FAPGA. Uh, today, we are focusing on the mm, persistent memory over fabric uh, in Spark Shuffle. So what is a personal memory over fabric? <coughs> uh, persistent memory, um, all fabric is a new uh, person memory is a new class of memory and storage um, technology. As a, from the point of view of a software engineer, uh, the new memory class fills the performance gap between DRAM and um, traditional hard drive SSD. Mm. The performance of, the performance of DRAM is great, but um, uh, the uh, it's great, but uh, it's, it's relatively uh, expensive and the volunteer. SSD and hard drive are much cheaper, but the performance is not clearly as fast as DRAM. So, <coughs> uh, uh, person memory also allows program to access uh, data as memory, a uh, direct byte addressable. Uh, while the content uh, are non-volunteer. So it, it is what we want, we, we need in Spark Shuffle. Uh, with this technology, uh, when memory is in Shuffle uh, in Spark, uh, the in-memory in data need to be spear in Shuffle map stage. Uh, we can now use persistent memory uh, to hold the spear data with usual low latency and with, uh, 
compared with the spin into SSD or hard drive. So why we uh, why we try to, why we use RDMA? Uh, Persistent memory is really fast, but if we have traditional TCP IP network stack, uh, the performance will be limited. So we we want to use RDMA. RDMA actually is the acronym of uh, Remote Direct Memory Access. Uh, it supports reading from or writing to uh, memory on a remote server without the CPU involvement on that server. RDMA offer a low latency, high bandwidth uh, with zero copy kernel bypass feature. Application perform data transfer directly from user space. No context switch. <coughs> so here is, is per, uh, person fabric. Uh, we got uh, such picture from uh, person memory summit uh, last year. Uh, the, there are three kinds of remote personal memory use case from left to right. The first is to use to, uh, person, uh, remote personal memory as a mirror to replicate data in local uh, personal memory, like what the RBD uh, does. Or the, the, the mirror is for uh, data high availability. Uh, the second use case to, is to expand uh, unknown memory capacity. Mm, like what MMO Fabric does. Uh, the third one is the third use case, a uh, memory holds shared data between different, uh, different nodes. Uh, in Spark, in Spark, person memory holds shared data between different Spark executor. Uh, Spark PMOF is, is more like the third uh, use case. At the end of the session, I will, I will dis, uh, discuss remote personal memory pool. We're trying to extend uh, Spark PMOF to an uh, external uh, personal memory pool and provide an interface to Spark to uh, store the shuffle data. So here's the Spark PMOF design. Uh, shuffle is not actually is a not a new concept. Uh, in the map reduce framework, shuffle is a bridge between uh, map and reduce. Reduce need to read map out output file through shuffle, which is a process of uh, redistributing uh, data between um, uh, partition. That may cause uh, data moving across a JVM process or even over the executor on different node which means the shuffle phase uh, involve network I.O. and disk I.O. Uh, many operations in shuffle uh, require uh, data shuffle like uh, a join uh, glue by. So shuffle performance is critical for Spark performance. Here is a high level, here is a high level Spark shuffle example. You know, uh, Spark is a distribute compute uh, system in the map stage, uh, Spark executes a load data from HDFS and writes the memory and writes the data to memory buffer. When the buffer is full, it will be spared to local shuffle disk as output fi uh, output file according to the partition rule user defined. Uh, then in the reduce stage. Spark executor fetch from local output file or remote output file according to, according to the partition rule as well. Finally, uh, execute the user-defined operator to uh, that data and write back to HDFS. Uh, as Spark Shuffle require network I.O. and disk I.O., so in many workloads, the shuffle disk can be the bottleneck. For example, above is a graph computation workload. In shuffle space, the disk has been the bottleneck. Uh, CPU is waiting for uh, I.O. operation. Here is some reason why, why uh, shuffle I.O. can be the bottleneck. Uh, as mentioned uh, previously, a uh, disk read and uh, write I.O. Uh, may occur at the same time. 
but you know SSD or hard drive is not friendly to mix, mix, mix I.O. Secondly, when uh, memory buffer is full in map stage, uh, data is, is, is speared to local disk as a temp file. Once, once, map, ma once map task complete, it will merge all the temp file into the final output file. Uh, merge operation actually incur uh, write ampli amplification up to three times. Thirdly, in Java space, uh, some workload lead to small I.O. size, which cause low throughput as seek time uh, dominate. The main idea of uh, Spark PMOF is straightforward, uh, leveraging high bandwidth of uh, persistent memory and low latency of uh, persistent memory over fabric to avoid disk bottleneck and further, short, and further shorten the network latency by uh, RDMA. Uh, the virtual address of a personal memory can be registered as RDMA memory region, so uh, we can use RDMA read operation to fetch shuffle data in personal memory uh, in remote node. Uh, we remote, we remote a new shuffle manager Based on uh, Spark 2.3, uh, the new uh, Spark Shuffle Manager support uh, several features. We implement a Java wrapper for PD, uh, PMDK, LibPMM, OBJ, and leverage PM, uh, PMDK to provide transactional write. Uh, second, uh, new Shuffle Manager support fail over, uh, supporting multiple executor process to get uh, multiple persistent memory namespace in def DAX mode and also be able to reopen uh, the same device when uh, fail over. Thirdly, persistent memory based uh, uh, implement uh, external sorter. Uh, it support shuffle data spill and support map site combined. Uh, for the RDMA part, we uh, implement uh, a network framework named uh, uh, HPNL. Uh, it is based on Leaf Fabric. And it is a high performance network library. Uh, we want to uh, replace Netty in Spark with uh, HPNL and, um, and leverage the RDMA feature to accelerate Spark Shuffle. So here is the HPR design. Uh, today, the problem we met is uh, even many CSP had already changed our domain uh, in their cluster, but they uh, don't see performance uh, benefit uh, by increasing the NIC bandwidth. And then they, all, they, they run TCP IP protocol on top of it. Uh, however, RDMA is another story. It has different program model and we can't directly run big data application on RDMA NIC and, and leverage RDMA zero copy feature. The reason why we use uh, Leaf Fabric is uh, because it is a, a protocol dependent a library that support many network fabric uh, like socket, uh, TSP, uh, RDMA, uh, Omnipass. Uh, Leaf Fabric provide uh, Java and uh, early fabric provide a C++ interface. But for big data engineer, RDMA is too com complex, complex to them. They need to handle uh, thread model, uh, QPair, uh, RDMA buffer management. What they want uh, is a simple Java high level uh, network interface that support different kinds of network protocols. So uh, that is uh, what uh, HPRM to do. We, just pro we want to provide a simple interface for a big data, a big data engineer. So here is a Spark PMOF design. The left picture is a is current uh, shuffle process. In map stage, um, Spark serializes uh, Java objects to byte buffer in off-heap memory. Uh, when 
uh, then write the bat buffer into shuffle output file. Finally, persist persist shuffle data to uh, shuffle disk through file system. Uh, in reduced stage, reduce fetch shuffle data from remote node by netting. Netting is, uh, netting is TTIP um, based uh, network framework. Uh, for the right picture, it is our uh, Spark PMOF design. In the map stage, uh, we leverage the position memory device uh, to hold the shuffle data. So the Java object can be stored into personal memory directly by PMDK, uh, which can bypass the kernel, by, uh, kernel and the file system overhead. In the reduce stage, uh, reducer leverage HPNL uh, to read remote shuffle data uh, on persistent memory to achieve zero copy and kernel bypass. Uh, metadata and data are both stored in a persistent memory. So when fail over, a Spark executor can load the metadata from personal memory and uh, then load the shuffle data from personal memory. Mm. If we compare the two uh, design, we can see uh, if with a uh, personal memory or fabric, we have less uh, context switch. Uh, we uh, use RDMA read to remote uh, shuffle data on personal memory. We have more efficient IO paths. So here's the uh, network traffic changes. Uh, if we use RDMA read schematics, uh, that means Spark executor uh, <coughs> uh, need to know the address or uh, address uh, of the shaft data uh, on the remote node. Uh, at first, Spark executor use RDMA send schematic to get a memory address. Uh, when the executor on remote node gets a message. Uh, th uh, then read the metadata from personal memory, then send the metadata back. When the QTA get memory address, uh, the, uh, it's QTA directly use RDMA read schematic to get shuffle data on persistent memory of a remote node. Com uh, comparing with the Spark Netty based uh, network traffic, uh, Spark PMOF uh, reduce uh, end, end times network transfer per Spark task. Actually, actually, here we use uh, RDMA read uh, semantics. We, we don't use uh, uh, RDMA write, uh, fl uh, then flush the data to personal memory. Uh, for the performance evaluation, the first thing we want to see uh, the first thing is that we want to see how the uh, hand, high bandwidth that persistent memory offered influence of Spark performance. Uh, so we compare uh, Spark performance with HDD as a, a shuffle device and choose TerraSort workload because uh, we know in such IO intensive workload, the HDD, the disk IO, can be the bottleneck. The second thing is we want to see uh, the low. Le we want to see how personal memory or fabric can, can improve the I.O. latency. Uh, we compare the default network framework, uh, NETI in Spark. It's a very simple uh, POC cluster. It's for a node cluster with a Spark master and HDFS name node, three node for Spark slave and HDFS data node. Uh, Spark and HDFS are collocated. There are four NVMe. Mm, in every data node, uh, in every uh, HDFS data node. We can see the chart uh, on the IP right side. Uh, Spark PMOS significantly reduce the Spark execution time <coughs> for both map stage and the reduce stage. <coughs> because uh, HDD had become the bottleneck uh, in this workload, while personal memory uh, provide higher bandwidth. Uh, we can see the chart on the bottom right side. Uh, since we use RDMA and the leverage network and uh, storage co-design, uh, we see significant uh, uh, latency benefit. Uh, 
we see significant performance uh, benefit, but it, it is not enough. We found that there is still um, some optimization headroom. Uh, when we anal analyze the performance result, uh, for example, um, regist uh, registering uh, personal memory virtual address as RDMA region is time consuming. Uh, in our case, uh, every uh, five gigabyte uh, personal memory consumed about 30 seconds for RDMA registration. Uh, secondly, in current uh, Spark PMOF design, uh, we need to put personal memory on every compute node. Uh, uh, in the an at the end of this session, uh, we will discuss, uh, we are trying to extend uh, Spark PMOF to uh, external uh, independent uh, shower surface with uh, a remote memory pool. Thirdly, uh, current uh, personal memory uh, just support uh, dev dust uh, if, if used with uh, RDMA. In the POC cluster, we use four, <coughs> four personal memory on every Spark uh, slave node. Uh, see the persistent memory bandwidth collected by Imam. Uh, it, it delivers up to four gigabyte um, write bandwidth per node, and Spartarosaur uh, didn't hit persistent memory uh, peak write bandwidth. Mm. Persistent memory delivers up to five gigabyte read bandwidth per node. Uh, it, it also uh, it, it, it didn't hit the um, persistent memory's reticle peak read bandwidth as well. The performance was limited by uh, sort of operation in reduced stage, and uh, the uh, the read bandwidth and write bandwidth to HDFS. Here is the uh, Spark PMOF uh, memory footprint benefit. Uh, Spark PMOF enables spill to persistent memory. Uh, we can see from the chart on the right side, uh, Spark PMOF uh, significant reduced memory footprint by 4.7 times under the same performance. Uh, that means when Spark execution, uh, when the Spark execution time is uh, 30 minutes for both configurations, Spark PMOF use uh, 11 gigabyte personal memory for spill and. Uh, 16 gigabyte DRAM and Spark execution, while your vanilla Spark use uh, 125 gigabyte DRAM and execute memory. Also, we can see uh, Spark PMOF show excellent performance uh, in a low uh, memory uh, environment. Uh, with deep dive, uh, we found Spark PMOF optimized uh, GC overhead. Mm. In low lab, in low memory environment, and optimize the mixed I/O workload when spear happened. So here is a performance summary. Uh, personal memory changed the traditional uh, memory storage. Uh, Hard tackle with a high p c capacity and high bandwidth. Mm. P uh, Spark PMOF combine uh, personal memory and RDMA technology to provide high, high bandwidth and usually low latency uh, for Spark Shuffle. Um, if we want to use uh, Spark PMOF, uh, if, if, if you expect high uh, capacity, high bandwidth, and low latency, uh, you can use Spark PMOF. If, if the Spark Shuffle is DRAM based, uh, migrating a DRAM based Shuffle to PMOF Shuffle is more cost effective and uh, brings comparable performance benefit. Uh, Spark PMOF is not needed if the, if the uh, Spark Shuffle is not IO, Spark, Spark workload is not IO intensive, you don't need Spark PMOF. 
uh, DSIO and the lattice is not the bottleneck. <coughs> uh, here is, uh, is currently what we are trying to do. Uh, uh, in independent shaft layer is coming increasingly important for large CSP, uh, like Alibaba and Jindo in China, they want to uh, use external shaft service and uh, leverage uh, cloud storage or distributed storage to uh, hold the shaft data. So we're trying to extend Spark PMF to an uh, external uh, personal memory pool a uh, current status is we able to uh, saturate uh, 40 gigabyte RDMA NIC, and we are also trying try uh, we also try uh, 100 gigabyte RDMA NIC. Uh, So here is the summary. Um, last year, we, uh, we found uh, there is a, a significant performance uh, drop uh, in uh, disaggregation solution. So um, we are trying to optimize, uh, we are trying to optimize uh, the uh, accelerator performance um, to, uh, to close the performance gap and improve the scale uh, out uh, capability. Person memory or fabric is 10% uh, personal memory, uh, personal memory uh, to uh, big data workload, uh, leveraging personal memory and the DRAM uh, spark <coughs> enable a high performance, low latency uh, shuffle solution to accelerate by shuffle. And, Deliver, delivers up to 25.8 times um, performance improvement for Terasort workload. So if your uh, Spark work workload is I.O. intensive and the disk uh, has been the bottleneck and you want to, you want uh, usual low latency uh, for the Spark workload, actually I, I think uh, Spark PMF is a good choice. The next step, is, as, uh, introdu as introduced previously, we're trying to uh, integrate uh, Spark PMF to an uh, external shower service <coughs> and implement a uh, remote person memory pool uh, to hold the shower data in Spark. So thank you. Okay. So you're, you're, if I understand correctly, your benchmark involved uh, 600 gigabyte terasort? Mm, yeah, terasort. Okay. Yeah, we use high bench. So you can rent a server for a couple bucks an hour that has several terabytes of main memory. Did you try comparing performance against just load all the data into ordinary main memory and run QSort on it? Mm. Yes, we compared, we have compared Spark PMF uh, performance with uh, uh, DRAM based shuffle. Now, I'm not talking about Spark, forget about Spark. Just write the 20 lines of C code that calls QSort to sort your data in memory. No, we haven't tried that. For such a small data set, that's the first thing I would try. Okay, we haven't tried. Um, Saw the data in DRAM. Yes, actually, you can uh, you can use uh, some library like uh, memcond to uh, use persistent memory as memory and not uh, use a persistent feature. Uh, uh, in, in many CSP in China, they want uh, their shuffle data is per persistent. Uh, 
because when fail over, uh, if your data is the shaft data is the memory, uh, we, we can't get the shaft data back. Yeah. But it's not, uh, it's not replicated. The, the, nodes, the nodes that hold the shuffle data goes down. At least for the time period when the node is down, you don't have access to that data. So I thought that in general, the principle is to recreate the data. Uh, if we uh, if we don't persist the shuffle data, when fail over, we need to recompute, and uh, that is time consuming, I think. But that's the fundamental basis of this programming model. Yeah. Hardware is supposed to be cheap, and it's supposed to fail. And the system has built recovery models inside of that to deal mm. with it. Fundamentally, said we don't want to throw hardware at the problem. We want to keep it much more software-based and software-resilient. We want to keep it commodity. So it seems kind of weird to me. Well, I can see the benefit for storing shuffle data on disk. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with the, with the potential reduction in cost of this stuff from. Uh, compute storage capability, right? I mean, mm -hmm. even if I go back to your original slides, the, the basis of those slides is, hey, disaggregated storage is the right way to do because you don't know how to size your cluster up front, right? Right. I'm not sure I agree with that thesis, okay? And because fundamentally, data sizes continue to grow much faster and so whatever amount of storage you decide to buy, it's going to become short. And the other thing is computational capacity. As you continue to bring on more use cases or allow people to use your data more inside of an organization, computational demand keeps going up also. Mm -hmm. You have to get to a point where you start to say that my computation is growing substantially faster than my storage needs or my storage needs are going substantially faster than my computation needs. And that's typically a long time for an organization when you're starting out. Yeah. Um, actually, the disaggregation solution is, um, is what many, uh, many companies use currently. There is a significant performance job, so we were trying to optimize uh, spot shuffle or Lucia performance. Yeah. No, actually, no. So you didn't have any worry at all about contention for the resources or potential uh, coherency issues between multiple clients accessing a common database. You were just separating them physically. Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you.